A lot of you have been hearing the word gas and that you have to have it, but don't really quite understand what the whole point or meaning of it is. I'm here to introduce you to Ryan Foucault, president of Das Connection. Before Ryan started in the wireless industry, he founded two national and international corporations. He's had about 12 years of experience in this field between Nextel, Motorola, and an electrical low voltage contractor. When Ryan was with Nextel, he worked with major government entities and Fortune 100 clients using cellular and push-to-talk communications, which is where he was first exposed to distributed antenna systems. While he was with Motorola, he developed an engineered mission critical safety first responder community and deployed a global wireless communication platform for the largest software company in the world. Ryan was also a part of a quarter billion dollar year electrical contractor senior leadership team where he learned how to design and execute complex electrical projects. Now that you've heard a little bit about Ryan's background, let me introduce you to the man himself, Mr. Ryan Foucault. Hi, my name is Ryan Foucault. We're going to talk about distributed antenna systems, or DAS for short. Specifically, we're going to talk about the cellular mobility inside of buildings and how distributed antenna systems can enhance that communication. And we're going to talk about the public safety communications or emergency responder radio inside of buildings. The fire code that is driving the requirement for this emergency responder radio coverage. And then also how we're building buildings more sustainably from an environmental standpoint by using low E glass, foil backed insulation. It's like we're building mirrors with our new buildings. All of these contribute to where the first responders that come into the buildings in the event of an emergency may not be able to communicate as effectively as they would in a building that didn't have these energy efficient materials. And so we're gonna discuss how as an industry from a low voltage engineering and construction standpoint, we can make sure that these mission critical communications and also cellular communications can work inside of these buildings. You may ask yourself, well, what is a building and how does it relate in terms of requirements for enhancing these technologies and frequencies? And because of the low E glass and foil box insulation, it's really buildings as small as 10,000 square feet in some cases, and up to buildings that are millions of square feet. So we're gonna go through exactly what this technology and frequencies interact with each other, and especially inside of these buildings. But first, we're gonna step back a little. We're gonna talk about why we're here. So 9-11 was a, was, a, was a real turning point for the emergency responder community in terms of communications. We realized as a nation that the need for these first responders to communicate was critical. And we needed a tool to be able to communicate to all the stakeholders involved whether it's construction, general contractors, to architects and engineers, to building owners, and then the actual first responder community themselves, we needed a tool to communicate, how do we enhance the coverage inside of these buildings where that coverage may or may not work? How do we do that in a way that allows for consistent standards, consistent quality, so when these first responders enter into a building with a DAS, they know it's gonna work. They know that if there's a fire in the building, that maybe some of the infrastructure may be damaged. However, overall, they know that everything has been done to make sure that they have secondary power sources, that they have fire rated chaseways or pathways to make sure that the devices and cable can survive as long as possible while they're in there responding to this critical situation. One of the other drivers to this industry is the cellular component. And although cellular and public safety both use radio frequencies and are very similar in terms of their overall functionality, from that standpoint, are really quite different in terms of their use. So from a cellular perspective, if you look back even 10 or 15 years ago, where we were as an industry, uh, our phones were quite a bit different than they were today. I remember when it was cool to carry around a bag phone in the mall. Or when I first got started in the wireless industry at Nextel, it was pretty neat to do the chirp chirp 
can you hear me now? And look at where we are today. So it started as a voice application and then texting came out. That was pretty neat. And then, oh my goodness, the Blackberry came to the market. And all of a sudden we were able to send emails and receive emails. And then when they added the functionality of the documents, so we can look at Word docs or PDFs, that was pretty neat. But if you look at the, the curve in terms of the advances that the industry has taken, it's continuously changing. We started at 1G, then 2G, 3G. Currently, we're at 4G, or LTE. LTE really stands for long-term employment. <laughs> Just kidding. It's long-term evolution. And then what we're hearing now in the news and with testing of these manufacturers is 5G. When is it going to stop? Probably never. We're continuing to become more and more reliant on our mobile devices. And it used to be that material resided on the device. However, today it's really an interactive tool that we're interacting with the cloud or someone else's computer. With that, we have to have the capacity or the bandwidth for those devices to work in a seamless way. The days of being able to step over to a window to make a phone call or to access an email are over. With the low E glass, you're now really better suited to go into that stairwell with about two feet of concrete than you are a single pane of low E glass. So we need to change our thinking of how we look at wireless infrastructure and our buildings. So that's really why we're here today is because we believe that we can create the most amazing distributed antenna system experience in the world. And with your help, we can do that in a way that benefits our customers, our building owners, and our partners in the mobility space.